What's up guys, Matt Tolver. So we are in the middle of the woods as always. You can see I got my little tail veil there hooked up. And then I also have my uh, Zero Breeze Mark II portable AC hooked up in here. We're gonna be kind of testing that out again tonight. Last time I did test it out, but there was a little bit of issues. I had a tarp kind of hanging down and it was holding a lot of the heat. And I also forgot the cord that connects the battery to it. And I also have a bigger power station this time. So we should be able to run the AC longer. And I'm also gonna start the vehicle this time and like pre-cool it. People recommended trying that first. I'm just in a state forest, way down a dirt road here, in the middle of the woods by myself. So here's, uh, got that weather tech in the window, cut some holes, put the tubing for the zero breeze in there. I'm gonna be putting a netting over this so I don't suck bugs in tonight. I just haven't done that yet. There it is, the zero breeze Mark II. You got some dry food I'm gonna be using today. I'll be hooking up all my lights and stuff to my power station tonight. And uh, I'm gonna be also trying out this Blue Eddy PV200 uh, solar panel. See how this works before it gets too dark here. And then uh, there's my setup. I do the next cop with those extension legs. I got some lights and whatnot in here. And uh, here's my tail veil set up. I love this thing. It just attaches to the back of a van or SUV or whatever. I do not have it staked down basically at all. I do have two stakes here. They're only partially in there if you can see because this ground is so condensed and full of rocks that they'll just bend. They won't even go in there even if you had like a super big hammer or something. And there is two stakes over there and one here on both sides if you wanted to stretch it out and have it staked good if it was going to be like windy. But we should be fine. I'm going to take this down uh, before I go to bed tonight. But here's the inside. We got my uh, nice comfy chair. It's my like little rocking type chair. And I got my table. And we're going to be busting out this Keurig. Here's my big power station. This is the Ocatel PV2001. It's a 2000 watt power station. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to hook this Bluetti PV200 solar panel up before the sun gets too low. And let's see if we can get a good charge on it. Hook it up to that power station right there. And uh, let's see what we can get. So all the cords are right in the top of this thing. Uh, that's what I really like. Here's the cord that plugs into the power station here. It comes with it. It's got like that Anderson plug style on there. And you got your little MC4 connectors. This can handle up to 500 watts of solar. Um, that panel I have is a 200. So obviously you could get a couple of them for a bigger solar panel. So now I just got to hook this up. Here's the Blue Eddy solar panel cables. Got to hook that in. Time for a little coffee in the middle of the woods. I think this is like a Walmart brand, great value, but it's a caramel cream, medium, Arabic coffee. Got my Minnesota cup. The AC button to turn this thing on. So now the input is 160 watts from the solar panel and uh, this Keurig is pulling 1164 watts. I just want to try to keep this charged as much as I can so I can run that AC long. So once this pulls its power, I'm going to charge some of this stuff here at the same time. And then I just want this to get back to 100% before we go to sleep tonight with that AC. So guys, look, I literally am making Keurig coffee. It's basically done at this point. I'm still at 99%. And that solar panel is recharging it back to 100% here. That's what's awesome about having a solar panel. That off-grid lifestyle is what I'm about. Here we go. Got some coffee in the middle of the woods. Very easy. This fan isn't charged, so I need to plug this bad boy in here. Get this charged up. You just turn it on by pressing that little USB button. And uh, it should start charging. Yep, it's charging the fan. So I might need that tonight. Got this big battery pack. It's at 73%, but I like to be at 100. Uh, this, I plug this into my GoPro at night to uh, get a time lapse. So we'll charge that. Also my flashlight battery's not fully charged. So I'm gonna plug that bad boy in here. See that's charging up now. All right guys, just charging up a bunch of stuff while the sun is high. I got my ice cold water. 
Got my coffee. I was just letting it cool down a little bit. That breeze is actually feeling really good. It's a super light breeze, but feels pretty good. I did park my van kind of sideways to like kind of shade myself a little bit here. And uh, so far we're still charging at almost 160 watts. So 44 watts are being pulled or actually transferring from that solar panel into these. I'm charging this, this, two batteries currently, and then I got my uh, GoPro battery. So I'm charging a bunch of stuff. We're still at 99% with this because obviously I used a Keurig, which pulls the most power. And it's saying it'll take uh, 27 minutes to recharge based on me pulling those many watts and then recharging at about 160 watt. So here's those Blue Eddy PV200 solar panels again. I did slightly move them because the sun kind of is changing. And there is like a little tree right here that you can see the shade is getting really close to it. But what's sweet about this solar panel is they actually hooked them up in parallel. So even if this one gets fully blocked by shade, those ones would still work perfect. And I'd basically get, you know, three quarters of the power, even if this one was gonna get me. Most solar panels, if you block one of these, you'll get like zero power completely just because like they all work together. So if like one's not getting power, none are getting power. So that's what I love about this panel. You can see it has three legs here and you can adjust like right now it's at 45 degree angle, but they also got like a 50 degree angle and they got like a 40 degree, degree angle and the bottom is just to like close it. And then it has a nice like a uh, waterproof zipper here and uh, a 10 foot cord with the mc4s connected on it and you can see it connected to that ocatel power station the cord that comes with that is about three feet or so so it gives me about 13 feet so say i needed to move this out farther i do have some extra cords actually um, in here that would add an extra 20 feet so i could really move the solar panels way out here if i needed to i probably didn't really need to set this uh tail veil up today because there's not really that many bugs out minnesota's kind of weird like there's like two months where you get a lot of mosquitoes and stuff like that and then all of a sudden they just almost disappear at night obviously there'll be mosquitoes but it's not like during the day that they're all over obviously it's super sunny so that's another reason but wasn't sure if I'd need it. In a couple weeks, we actually plan to go northern Minnesota where all the timber wolves and really big black bears and all that stuff are. So wanted to make sure this thing uh, still worked well because Joel's gonna actually sleep in the back. I have a tarp that I'm gonna put over it. It's actually like a rain tarp, but that's gonna be like his tent. And then I'm gonna be sleeping in the van. So that should be pretty sweet. So yeah, guys, this is just kind of like a little test video here. Um, I wanted to see how this works in the field. I've never actually used a solar panel to kind of do like an off-grid style. Um, I like glamping. I'm not gonna lie to you. I like glamping, at least for vehicle camping, I like glamping. Yeah, it says about 28 minutes currently with uh, the 44 watts being pulled, 29 minutes. It's gonna fluctuate based on the sun um percentage at the time like if this goes up for a moment or this goes down it'll kind of fluctuate but still less than 30 minutes to fully charge while something's plugged in we'll be at 100 percent for that uh, ac tonight and we should be able to run it and hopefully uh, get a good test out of that so i'm just drinking my uh, ice cold water and this should be cooled off enough so i'm about to drink some of this and uh hopefully we'll be in the safe van here and we'll get a nice little setup going some cool lights and we'll be back in there before the predators come out. This Blue Eddy has a really nice handle. This is like super high quality. Uh, this has those monocrystalline cells, so it's like super efficient, like 23.4% efficiency, was actually, which is actually like really high. And it has that like, I think it's called an ETFE coating or something like that. Whereas like some of the cheaper solar panels you get, like a year goes by and it starts to turn yellow like it's just really cheap coating so this has you know like everything you can to make it a high quality solar panel and very efficient but you know when you get that you got to pay a little bit more for the quality and whatnot as you guys can see i have all my uh, weather tech window shades on they fit perfect people ask me all the time i get these from weather tech website you can get them custom fit for your vehicle size so it will make it pitch dark in here even during the day if you want it to be so hopefully this helps keep some of that cool in when we run that ac and then helps reflect that sunlight out this is the beginning guys of me uh, starting to get an off-grid setup that solar panel getting power out in the middle of the woods they also have a 120 and a 350 depending on what your needs are i do want to get their 350 eventually because then you just have one big panel all in one but you obviously can get multiples of these so we could have like six of these or whatever to have like 600 watts of uh, power which would really be epic if you guys haven't seen uh, my previous video this is my new rei table this thing is sweet it folds all together and uh, packs in a little bag these like slide together and really compact i really like it i think it supports about 100 pounds but it's pretty light it's got aluminum and you see this tail veil does connect right underneath back of the bumper stays very tight on there so like no bugs basically can get in 
Let me talk about this power station quick, guys, because they gave me a crazy coupon. So if you guys are interested in this, it's like over 400 and some dollars off. I'll have the code on the screen and then in the description and whatnot. But this is the Ocatel P2001. This is a 2000 watt power station, like 2000 watt hour capacity, and it has a 2000 watt inverter. So basically you run everything on this. It has a 12 volt, 10 amp, like cigarette plug. It has this like XT60 plug. Um, I'm not sure what uses that, but, and then it has these two like 12 volt, three amp barrel plugs. If you don't have anything that uses those, you can also get like one of these little attachments so you can have like two extra cigarette lighters. So you'd have three cigarette lighters. It has two regular USB-A plugs and then it's got two quick charge USB-A's. It's got two of those 100 watt fast charge USB-C ports. Some of them are only 60, so I like that. It's got a little light on it. There's on, there's your uh, SOS, there's strobe, and then off. There's the power button. You just gotta hold it for three seconds to turn it on. What I really love about this thing is all of your cords just fit right in the top. So you don't have to have one of those like massive power bricks like you do on most power stations. You just literally plug this right into the side because this is where you plug it in. You just plug this in and plug it in your wall and this thing charges at 1100 watts an hour, which is by far the fastest charging power station I've ever used. This thing will fully charge in less than two hours. It's like 1.8 hours or something like that. And this is where you plug your solar panel or your uh, car charger. It comes with the car charger also. It'll do up to 500 watts of solar, so that's pretty good. Here's the Anderson plug that you plug in right here. Then you plug into your uh, 12 volt of your car to charge it that way. And it's got six AC outlets, which is the most I've ever had on a power station so far. And they all have ground, which is good because something of this size, you want to have like big products plugged in, like Keurigs and all that, and they all have ground on them. And that's how you'd turn it off right there. And then it has like two fans on each side. And it has this overcharge protector here on the side here. So like if something went wrong, it will click. And then uh, you just press it to turn it back on. Look at that big beast. It weighs 48 and a half pounds. So it's definitely a heavier power station. Uh, you're not going to be carrying it into the middle of the woods. And it's got two big handles, which is really nice to carry this with two hands. And then it's got a flat top. So you can like store this under a shelf or like I do underneath there where some of them are like rounded. And at this size, I wouldn't even be able to fit it under there. Like there's literally zero sound. It's like the quietest it's ever been like that I've been in the woods. It's kind of weird. I guess usually I go, it's kind of windy because I like camping in storms and stuff like that, but it's so peaceful, dude. This is crazy. There's a little hill there, so you can't see super far, but me and my little van. Can't wait to bust that AC on here. Hopefully you guys can see, but I do have a uh, bear mace on me. I'm gonna have a really loud air horn, which I usually carry all the time. But uh, I have went through the process of basically getting my license to carry, which I've been talking about getting. I'm just waiting for the sheriff's office to approve me at this point. They should approve me. I have a couple things from like over 12 years ago when I was a young kid, just at that dumb young age, but I don't think that should hold me back. I should get approved. And once I get approved, I'll be getting a Glock 20 and I will only use that obviously for protection. I never want to have to use it, but uh, if I do, at least I'll have it because there are some crazies in this world. And you know, if some bear rushes me, I'd like to have some kind of protection. You guys may be experts when it comes to solar panel stuff or off-grid stuff or whatever, but I'm very new to it, so I'm just showing you. So these are the extension cords that I got. These are like 20 feet cords. So like I said, if say you're in a shaded area with your vehicle or your tent or whatever, or your house, and you wanted to have your solar panel way out in the middle of the sun so you don't have to deal with shade, you want to get some kind of extension cords. These are 20 foot ones. You can get like 30 feet ones or whatever you want. I'll have a link to everything in the description, guys. So let me just hook this up and show you guys quick. Oh, we have a friend somewhere close by. Those are some pretty big uh, branches breaking here. And you can see some people do leave some trash, unfortunately, here. And I'm going to try to pick some of that up in the morning here. But like, look at the dead, the bones right there, guys. The dead deer. Hope you can see it. I don't know if you can see the skull, right? So I know that is very gross, guys. Oh, look at the bones right here. Look at the bones. There's no reason that whatever that is that's uh, out here close by can't hear me talking because it's so quiet out here and they can't smell me. So let's hope we don't have a bear or something out here. Here's the solar panel. I, like I said, this is just kind of a demonstration because I technically don't really need much solar anymore. 
but you can see now I moved it out farther where originally the cord wouldn't reach. And uh, these extensions just hang in, uh, plug it right in, they're MC4. So MC4 to MC4, connect that there. And then you just connect uh, the other side to the shorter cord that comes with the power station. And now you can put this way out. Put this out in the middle of the road if I wanted to. That wouldn't be smart though. Guetti did give me a code. It's like a very short term code. Uh, you can check if it still works. It's Tober TV20. It won't work much longer if it does work right now, but if they gave me any new code or a better code or there's any codes out there that I find out that save you more on this power station or that or anything, I try to update them. So just check whatever I have in the description or the comments. It should be the newest, best code. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to get stuff like that, I try to give you guys the coupon codes that they give me and uh, save you guys some money. Well, it seems to be pretty pointless to have this today because like I said, there's barely any bugs out here. Now, if I was gonna sit out here this evening when mosquitoes start coming out, this would be very useful, but I was thinking there'd be more bugs because I haven't went camping in a while. That little like bumblebee or something. Is that a bumblebee? A little mini guy or something? That's what happens, you leave the door open. Live, bro, go out so you can live. Come on, get out, bro. Figure I might as well make more coffee. We got basically unlimited power currently with the sun up, so. holes are from hmm I don't know where do I live you know what that means though guys epic winter footage coming soon you know what's even more awesome than winter footage fall from the drone shots this has to be my last cup for the night, guys. Otherwise, uh, we will not be sleeping. So after running the Keurig, we're still at 99% because this thing just keeps charging. And that's obviously while these are being charged, too. Nine, dude, you can make Keurig all day. 141 watts currently. Like I said, I don't know if it has to do at all with uh, it being limited right now. But either way, 140-some watts. It's like 4.30 p.m. or something like that. So definitely not prime time, but got a little bit of shade on there from a couple little weeds but other than that i'm still happy with that some of you guys have seen my uh, new e-scooter i got recently i also have off-road tires for it now so i'm gonna be getting those on here very soon and i got an e-bike now they actually sent it to me i just got to use it in a video so if you guys are doing youtube and they sent you free products to uh, use in your videos i think you would use it too so please understand it would be even better if i had two of these which would be like 400 watts and then this thing only pulls like 240 watts at max so uh, that thing would run all day basically just off of solar and then at night obviously it'd run off the power station and then recharge in the morning again so we're at 100 percent it's pulling seven watts because i have some lights and these accent lights on but i'm about to turn this uh, zero breeze on here i have it connected to my power station so let's turn the fan all the way up it's on boost mode so this takes a little bit to like get going to its full max uh, cooling but I just started the van, so I'm gonna let it circulate some of that humidity and heat out of there to kind of give the Zero Breeze a helping hand. So now it's letting those solar panels work. Uh, it's going up to, to about 111 watts, and then going out is about 130, so barely draining currently. It says uh, it'll take about 31 hours till full discharge, but obviously the AC is kicking in, and uh, the solar panels aren't gonna be able to get their max potential because it's already like 5.40 p.m. and the sun's getting low. But either way, that should help for a couple hours. And I just want to see uh, what the temperature change in here is. This obviously isn't going to be a very good example of how well a solar panel is going to help keep that AC running without draining the battery because it's so late in the evening. But if you were to, for some reason, be in your vehicle during the day, during peak hours of sunlight, you put your solar panel out in the sun and say you were in the shade, I think that uh, you could be pretty cool during the day and uh, not pull a ton of power. All right, I got the little uh, Skeeter Beater screen on here. It just has a ton of magnets to uh, keep it nice and tight on there. Well, the AC with all the lights is pulling about 257 watts. Currently, we're only getting uh, 74 watts in, but that's because it's in the shade. This is actually in the shade right now. It's probably hard to tell. That tree's shading quite a bit of it. So obviously, this is not what you wanna do. You wanna set it up in the sunlight.
took that solar panel down because I have plenty of power between those two batteries right now to just do the testing I need tonight. All right, guys, we are about to have some chicken teriyaki dry food. Real simple. And look what I saw. Ice cream sandwich. Uh, it says it tastes like the real thing. I don't even need to add water, I don't think, based on this. Ready to eat. No drip, no mess. So uh, we'll see how this tastes. says wait five minutes stir again and then uh, additional four minutes and it should be good to go all right guys it's finally time to test that AC out all I got to do is mix this again so we're good uh, no more propane so we're gonna head inside and we should stay inside the van for the rest of the night I am switching over to the battery that comes with it the reason being is because this obviously has more power in it so I want to use this at night I want to use this while uh, it's still daylight and I'm awake. So I have this turned on. About to return this AC on here. Turn the fan speed up. It's on boost mode. So we're letting this thing get going again on this battery. And then once this drains, obviously I'll run it off of that tonight. I'm going to be turning the van off here soon because it's nice and cool in here now. And we'll see if this thing can uh, maintain some of that cooling. And then we'll see the difference between outside and inside. really good and this AC feels amazing well it's currently 70 degrees in here I turned the van off a little bit and it's 82 outside I ain't gonna lie I've stepped outside a couple times because the Sun's not down it's hard not to go out there so um, we're 12 degrees below what it is outside currently um, just this is running right now on uh, the battery and like I said I'll be running it on that tonight so hopefully I get sleep with the AC most of the night I'm about to try this ice cream sandwich Mount House. It's a dry ice cream sandwich, so I honestly don't know what to expect. Oh, it looks like an ice cream sandwich, how they're always in that little uh, case. Feels like it might be broken. Maybe? Yeah, it's kind of broken. It's definitely dry. I don't know if you guys can see. I don't want to get crumbs everywhere. It definitely tastes like a mint ice cream sandwich. It's just dry. It's almost like tasting a graham cracker, but it tastes like an ice cream sandwich. It's just weird that it's dry. First time for a dry food snack, I think it's good. It's not as good as the original, obviously, cold ice cream, but it's good though. If you want to treat in the middle of the woods and you don't got some kind of cooler to have the real thing, it's not bad. Just having some ice cold water, middle of the woods. Got the Zero Breeze uh, Mark II running, that's it. No more van tonight. The sun's still up. Uh, we're majority in the shade. There's a little bit of sunlight on it. You know, a little bit of sunlight get through the branches, but from here on out, should just be more shady and uh, hopefully that zero breeze will keep me nice and cool tonight once that little battery that's connected to it goes out i'll plug it into the big power station and i will really let you guys know how well this performs tonight i'm hoping it does a little bit better than last time it is warmer than last time i did the test but we'll find out here's blowing out the hot air and here's sucking in the cool air at least we don't have like that tarp draping down it was like draping down to like this and Literally, I walked out and it was so hot right here. It was crazy. So hopefully we get a little bit better results tonight. So just hanging out outside and enjoying this beautiful weather. It's been a while. It's actually dark outside now. I am down to two bars and we're at 67 Fahrenheit in the back of the van and a little bit more in front. 
It is 70 in the front and 70 outside. So uh, it's not making it super cold in here. Where it's really cold is the air blowing out of that. So basically it's super cold on me. More of the cold air is obviously staying in the back of the van. Like I said, it's 67 back here. It's only 70 up here. See, uh, it is dark outside. Very dark outside now. Also got to give a shout out to my buddy Joel Candy. He just got his license to carry today in the mail. Um, I talked to him on uh, the phone. Well, actually, Snapchat, he sent me a video of him uh, opening the mail and he had his license in it. So now I'm just waiting for mine. Hopefully I'll have mine in the next few days. So congrats, bro. Little update, guys. I am no longer using the battery. I'm on to the power station. It says I got about seven hours left. Pulling about 185 watts. Probably because it's a lot cooler. It is actually getting kind of cold in here. It says it's 61 in here, which is uh, a little chilly actually. And up here, it's 65 inside and it's 67 outside. So it's almost to the point where you don't even need AC. Vehicles generally hold heat in a lot more. I've noticed that. So like if I don't have the AC on and I have these windows all shut, it would be, it'd be at least four, five, six degrees warmer inside the van. So you'd obviously want to have like your screen on and have some ventilation and maybe like a fan you'd probably be okay with it cooling as much, but it's actually gonna get up to like 95 Fahrenheit tomorrow. So I don't know at what point it's gonna start warming up, but um, yeah, the AC is doing good. Like I said, it doesn't really like cool off the whole van a ton. It just more or less cools the back of the van a lot and it takes the humidity out of, I feel like, well like in the direct air right now, it says 47 Fahrenheit air is blowing at me. So I'm actually kind of like shivering a little bit. You guys can see this air here. Let me see if it'll focus. 46 Fahrenheit. Burn it. This is my view, guys. Super cold air blowing on me. Just chilling right now. Some cold water, winding down, talking to the Lord, testing this AC out. It's not going to cool the front of the van like it does the back of the van, um, even at night, unfortunately. It's, you know, a 2300 BTU AC, but right here it is freezing. So, uh, Know. like I said this thing is really good for like spot cooling this is my view guys you can't see anything uh, but I'm going to bed I will see you in the morning overheated and shut off so no time lapse last night would have been pretty sweet shot too so clear skies oh well that's what i get for setting it out too early temperature gauge i'm gonna pick up uh, a couple of these big pieces of trash here before we head out
so at about 3 30 a.m i woke up and i was freezing uh, outside it said it was about 65 fahrenheit inside it said it was 61 and the air blowing on me had me freezing it was definitely uh, below 61 directly around me so i ended up turning the ac on its lowest mode it's called sleep mode and i was still pretty cold so i just uh all i had was my little thin summer sleeping bag so i was pretty chilly and when i did move it to sleep mode um i think i only had like 14 percent left in the battery by the time i did that and it still said i had like two hours of use once i went down to sleep mode because it like cut the power in half so it was only like 110 watts it was pulling instead of like 220 or whatever it was at. So eventually it died, AC stopped, I heard it stop, but I was plenty comfortable at that point. And obviously it wasn't like super hot outside anymore. Yesterday was like a high of like 84 Fahrenheit. And then today is supposed to be a high of like 95. So I didn't realize it was gonna get that uh, cool at night. But I was pretty pleased with the AC. Um, it's a really good spot cooler. And spot cooler sounds cheesy. It sounds like, eh, I don't wanna pay for that, but like, I don't necessarily need the whole van to be freezing cold. Like my area around me, the air that was blowing around around my body was really cold. So that's all I really needed. If you're looking for like something to like cool a whole like vehicle, a small car like a Prius would probably be fine. But if you're starting to get like a bigger van or something like that, uh, it's probably not gonna cool the whole van very well. It'll cool it down some for sure. It'll take a lot of humidity out, but it's more or less gonna keep you really cold. I think that's kind of what you pay for with this uh, Zero Breeze Mark II. The next step up from this, in my opinion, is probably that EcoFlow Wave, which I actually uh, intend to get at some point, whether it be uh, late soon or uh, next summer. I'll let you guys know what I think about that. I think that has more of a potential to actually cool the whole van well, but that is gonna pull a little bit more power, and you're probably gonna have to get their uh, EcoFlow uh, power stations, which can be pretty expensive. So you're gonna be spending a lot of money to be able to run that thing through the night. It's just more efficient. I think it runs through DC power or whatever if you run that through their power station. But that could probably cool the whole van pretty well. So that's basically your next option up. You're obviously gonna be spending more money and it's not as portable. So you're not gonna be wanna take that. I mean, you can take a tent camping, but I don't think you're gonna wanna walk very far with it. So this is definitely a more portable one, um, a little bit cheaper, but that's probably the next best option. See, you could probably be a little more efficient with it if you had it like tilted this way and the pipe's going straight that way. It may help a little bit because you know I have them curved quite a bit. It's not perfect by any means. Um, or say I had it turned, the Zero Breeze turned this way directly and then I cut two holes in it this way. So the pipes are a lot straighter and shorter. That may help with efficiency also. And then obviously I just have to turn this pipe to aim it at me. So could just say skip the piping and just let the front of the van be a little bit warmer and have super cold air blowing directly on you. It may pull less power at that point. From my experience, it seems uh, if you don't have all the piping and the uh, restriction, it generally pulls less power. So that may be good enough also. Moisture, the Zero Breeze got out yesterday. It's a decent amount. Well, I forgot my big garbage bag this time. I got uh, a little bit of room in this thing. So let's see if we can pick up a little bit of this trash before we head out. Well, I got what I could reach. Uh, there's some thick pines underneath there, so I couldn't really get too much, but got a full bag. All right guys, we're just trying to hide behind the van here for a second because it's getting warm and that sun is bright. So I uh, hope you guys found some kind of enjoyment or maybe learned something from one of my experiences in this because this is mainly just like a test of these different products. So I want to get a really nice like off-grid setup is my plan and we're definitely getting there. So uh, solar panels are pretty new to me and now I got a really big nice power station. Still learning the AC situation. Uh, Minnesota starts to cool off a lot earlier than maybe where some of you guys are. So. We don't have a ton of AC time left, so I don't know how much more use I'm gonna get out of this AC, but uh, I had some fun. It definitely kept me cold last night, and uh, we picked up a little bit of trash, some big pieces, uh, so we're, left, we're leaving it better than we found it. And uh, I got some fun videos coming soon, guys. I got my new drone coming soon. I just paid for that. Got another drone coming. Uh, I'm gonna have new cameras, thermals. I mean, we're gonna have some fun times. So 
I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.